Right, we look here, 2018, um, paper one, question six, to do with functions and to do with integration. So the first bit here shows the graphs, two functions. You've got a linear function, which is your x, and you've got a cubic function, your x cubed. And you can see there they intersect at three places, here, here, and here. Uh, that is the first part of the, the question. Find the coordinates of the point of intersection. So the coordinates mean your x and your y. So it's going to be like 2, 1, 3, 6, whatever, of the intersection of the graphs of the two functions. So what are they asking you? Where are them two graphs equal? Where are they the same? So where are the two graphs equal? And that's the key thing. Your first graph is called x, so your linear function. So where is that linear function equal to x cubed? Your cubic function. Now all you've got is an equation. Um, so get all terms to one side, x cubed, and that comes across, changes sign. Trying to solve this, take out your common factor, think of your methods of factorization. The first thing you can do there is take out your x. x by x squared gives you x cubed minus 1. And now let each of these terms equal to 0. Or you can further split up your x squared at minus 1. Someone might say, oh yeah, that's the difference of two squares. And they might rewrite that as x plus 1, x minus 1. And then let each term equal to 0, x equal to 0. Let each factor equal to 0, should I say, x equal to minus 1. And x minus 1 is equal to 0, x equal to 1. As I say, someone else might have just simply said, here x equal to 0, x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, x squared is equal to 1 and x is the square root of 1, and just remember that's plus and minus 1, as you see there. Now they did say the coordinates, you need an x and a y. So you just simply sub them in. Remember one of your functions there is h of x equal to x, another way of saying h of x is your y value. So when x is 0, y is also 0, so your point there is 0, 0, and that looks right. If you look back in your graph, that's definitely 0, 0, the origin. So we're good. Your other point here, when x is equal to minus 1, y is also equal to x. So y is equal to minus 1. So your point is minus 1, minus 1. So over here, that must be minus 1. That must be minus 1 down. Your minus 1, minus 1. And it's the same here. When x is 1, y is 1. So I'm going to follow that back in to my graph. There's 1 and 1. So that means that each of these must be 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and so on. Minus 0 0.2, minus 0 0.4, minus 0 0.6, minus 0 0.8, and going up the same. Now the next bit, um, you can only do this if you've done integration at this stage, but I may do it at this stage anyway. Um, so, sixth year is currently working at the minute, you cannot do this bit. So find the total area enclosed by the graphs. The total area between graphs, what you're using is integration. So you'll do that after calculus. So what you're doing is find the area of the upper curve, which is your h of x, your x, and your area of the lower curve, and that will get this area here. So integration always gives you the area beneath the curve back to the x-axis. So your first bit is you work out the area beneath the linear curve, your x. It'll give you that triangular shape. You could do half the base but the perpendicular height as well. Get your attempt marks. But you have no such formula for under this cubic curve. So what you need to do is your integration of your x cubed between 0 and 1. These are known as your limits. And you take one away from the other because when you do that second one it'll give you this wee bit here always beneath the curve back to the x-axis you take one away from the other so you can park this bit skip on or just bear with it so you're going between zero and one of your x function and you're going to take away the area under the curve your cubic 
Now to integrate, what you do is that's to the power of one. You increase the power by one. So one goes up to two divided by the new power. And your limits are between one and zero. As I say, for this first bit, you could have treated it as, as a right angle triangle. And that half the base, so half of one is a half times the height. So the area of this should work out to be a half. And this one increases the power by one, divided by the new power. And again, it's between the same limits. And what you do with these values is you horse them in for your x. So one squared over two is a half, minus zero over two, which is zero. And you take that all away from here. One to the power of four is one quarter minus zero over four. So what you end up with is a half minus a quarter which is just simply uh, half minus 0.5, which is a quarter square units. Now, if you look, that's actually only this side of it. You've also got to work out the other side, and it's completely symmetrical. So the area of this bit here is a quarter. The area here also will be a quarter as well. So let's double that up. Uh, two times a quarter is a half. And then the last bit is asking you, on the diagram, the previous page, using symmetry or otherwise. Now symmetry is the easier bit, but I'll do the otherwise bit as well. Draw the graph of the inverse function of k. So the inverse is just the opposite of k. So it's actually symmetrical through your line uh, y is equal to x. And I've made a hames of this now by shading in these bits, but sure. Check it. No, no, we're all actually all right. So instead, instead of having the wee belly this side of the, the line, your wee belly is just going to be the other side of it. Roughly speaking, going up here. So opposite of this, just like we're folding it over primary school you would have done them butterfly shapes or whatever and there you go and no examiner is going to be looking too closely at that you know there's your k inverse x if you wanted to be more precise and you just need to know how to find inverses anyway so here your graph is k of x is equal to x cubed what we say there is y is equal to x cubed so h of x, uh, k of x, get x and so on. So the cube root of y is equal to x, and then you replace the y with the x. So that's kind of the wee standard procedure to find your inverse. And then you know how to do graphs in your calculators. Um, do you know that thing? <laughs> Mode um, three for the table. And then you input the function. So input the function, the cube root of y. Or the cube root of x, sorry. Start at. Now, what you could do there for starting at, you could work with your positive values if you like, or you can take them all. You're starting at minus 1. You're ending at 1. And they're going up in point twos. Now, your values aren't going to be great looking here. Minus 1, minus 1, we know we're right. Minus 0 0.8, minus 0 0.9 to it. There we go. And you fill in those values there. So, that way you're going to be 100% right. Very accurate. Um, so that's your, or otherwise, your symmetry is just drawn and uh, reflected. And that line y is equal to x. So, if you want it the other way, mode 2. Or is it mode 2? Or oh, mode 3, sorry. For your table. Input your values and then you plot the endpoints between minus 1 and 1 in your steps, point 0.2.